here I am, you know, patiently waiting. This is Corey, and this is the O the Anth Podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. Welcome to episode 395 of the O the Anth Podcast, coming to you from all over LA. But of course, Corey is gentrifying LA one neighborhood at a time. Thank you for joining us. I think this is the first time you didn't trip over it a little bit. At least oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you can find us on your podcast of choice, but the easiest way, anchor.fm forward slash O the Anthem. Yeah, I didn't trip over it because uh, pressure makes me work well, and then I realized I didn't have a glass, so I had to jump up, get the glass, sit down, three, two, on. So, <laughs> under pressure. <laughs> oh, please stop right now. Before we... <laughs> If anything the at very, YouTube thinks that is the song, or at the very least, make sure you include the ting. I've heard from sources of authority that the ting is what makes it not uh, not violating the copyright. The ting? Yeah, the, you never heard a. Uh, <laughs> no, you never heard a uh, uh, Vanilla Ice talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanilla, it's he's just like ting. Yeah, he's like there's there's goes do 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 and mine goes do 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 ting. <laughs> that ting makes it different. It's not the same thing anymore. It's totally different. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we got a lot to get to in a little bit of time. So, first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Some things have appeared, some things have disappeared, and some things have yet to appear. Uh, my conscience, uh, me being a good person, still has not appeared. Never will, likely. Always <laughs> not going to be gone. To um, some, you would say. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, baby Casey also has not appeared. Yeah. So now yet. we have, we have a, a waiting game where, um, and this is my, my fervent belief that, uh, with me being unavailable on Saturday, that is the day, um, that that it's going to happen. Later. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, on am I frozen that, on your side, by the way? Oh you yeah. Know? You are. Oh, wait, no, no, there, <laughs> okay, you go. there we go. Now you're back. Yeah. Uh, Corey has the worst internet. <laughs> in the Western hemisphere and chooses to use that to, you know, stream live a podcast. So if you notice, he's not moving. Uh, I can still hear him. You can still hear him. Uh, but uh, his face is frozen. Yeah. I'm getting reds and yellows on your uh, feed. there. Well, Corey, so. Sorry. Oh, wait, there you go. Now you're moving again. Okay. Good. Um, so uh, two things. One, I really hope uh, that she's, that she's born on Friday because Friday is November the 5th. And it would give me another reason to celebrate that day. <laughs> but I have uh, I have the feeling that uh, whether or not she goes into labor on the 5th, the baby will not come until the 6th just because uh, that's just how life is. I don't know. That's how my life is. That's how it goes? Yep. Would you get her a little Guy Fox mask if uh, she was born on the... 100%! <laughs> I'm picturing now a tattoo of baby Casey with a Guy Fox mask on my shoulder. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel like that'd be money. I um, with a Bible verse, train them up in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not turn from it. Oh God, I, it's just like the creative juices are flowing. I mean, it's not a bad tattoo, but at the same time, I think it's like a joke if you have to explain it too much. It's like, no, that's my friend's infant baby. It would complicate the Tinder, the Tinder dating, where they're like, um, what's up with the baby on your? <laughs> not mine. Uh. Not my nephew either. Uh, <laughs> it's just a friend. A it's a new. I'm friends with the baby, <laughs> and I think so highly of her that I tattooed her on my body. Also, uh, to that point, uh, when I make plans for you, the week with you, the week week after uh, of that that uh, Casey's born, I want you to keep in mind you've known me for 19 years. You've only known that fucking baby for a couple of days. <laughs> all right, so you make smart decisions. <laughs> But uh, the other elephant in the room, uh, the thing that was I mean, it just here makes me gone. think like just makes me think like I'm going to get like a 4 a.m. phone call. It's like meet me at the L.A. River or else we're not friends anymore. I'm just like, some- whoa, why do we have to do it right now? And then you're just like, you'll fucking wake up at 4 a.m. for that baby. You won't wake up at 4 a.m. for me. <laughs> First of all, wake up at 4 a.m. I'm already still up at 4 a.m. I don't go to sleep. At Second I'd of still, all, I'd still probably be up, too. That's the problem. The uh, the only text you're going to give me at four three four o'clock in the morning is Sabaro's question mark. <laughs> That's it. We're going to have to drive to Las Vegas, so uh, it's going to have to be. Uh, it's going to take a while. Probably some in L.A. There's probably some in L.A. Right? There there like is Sabaro's in L.A., but uh, they are not. Uh, they're mostly like at malls and stuff like that. 
I think like yeah. most of Barrows are nowadays. I have a, a really great New York style pizza place at the end of the block. So when I'm like Sabaros or the place that's open late every day and gives me a piece of pizza the size of my head for five bucks. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, elephant in the room, the thing that was here and is gone. <laughs> oh, that's right. This is what we were getting to this whole time. Is it? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is the thing. You got to build it up. You got to build it up because otherwise it's just me and my exposed double chins. So it's not that big a news. But um, I didn't participate last year, but I have in years past uh, participated in No Shave November. I am once again. Uh, I'm going to send Corey a link that he can put in the show notes to the page because I am actually raising money uh, doing this as well. I'm going to be donating. Um, I'm matching donations uh, up to the my goal we'll see how it goes after that but my goal is uh is essentially ninety dollars but really a hundred dollars it's three dollars a day for the entire month of november and i am raising money for colorectal cancer research uh, i don't know if we've talked about it before but i lost my grandfather when i was three to colorectal cancer um and because he like many men did not decide to get a uh, colonoscopy um until later in life uh, and they found it pretty advanced when they when he got one uh so my dad has been very serious about getting them um by the way uh my dad is going to be 89 next year yeah right 80 uh 37 to uh, no uh he will be oh 84 oh so uh, 85 85 he'll be 85 next year either way i think um, he should run for president yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i mean he's got all the requisites he falls asleep in public places he stumbles over his words he can't walk straight so um he fits <laughs> But uh, so my Hangs dad out on Joe been... Manchin's held boat. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, no, because the uh, Joe Manchin's a dirty liberal socialist, uh, so he can't uh, can't do that. But um, my dad, to the point, has been getting uh, colonoscopy screening since he was thirty five years old, which he's been having them. He's been having a doctor up in his business more years than he didn't have a doctor up in his business every year. So um, it's very important. Luckily, he's been good. Uh, no other signs in my family at all. So I get pushed back to the 40 deadline, which means uh, two more years before uh, I have to endure that. Not that the procedure is so bad. It's the prep. It's the drink that you have to drink the night before. And then nine hours you spend in the bathroom without sleep. And then you go in and get probed by a doctor. So yeah. that sucks. But <laughs> And then you can't event, even eat fried chicken afterwards. <laughs> in any event, uh, raising money for colorectal cancer research uh, so that hopefully... Um, Max and Casey don't have to go through the same thing I did, and that's not getting to know their grandfather because they're lost too early. So uh, click on the link below. If you have a buck, give a buck. Uh, I'm trying to raise again uh, $90 in the next 30 days, so $3 a day. Um, and I'm going to match donations all the way up to $100 of my own. So thank you. Well, that is a very lovely thing. So I yeah, will... I, I, I... I think we've done good this today. <laughs> if we stopped right there, we did. But unfortunately, <laughs> we go on. <laughs> I was giving you an out to just say, hey, this actually is true this time. Uh, well, to, so to be fair, there is dinner waiting for me. So, I mean, like, oh, yeah, we want to oh. just wrap in. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, let's get on right through this list. So turning from one happy medical story to another COVID still out in the United States. And happy story, of course, because uh, two weeks we put a dent in the curve. And things have been under control, but, uh, you know, sad since then. Uh, over 600 people lost in the United States. I'm sorry, 700. 700 people lost in the United States. 700,000. So oh, I'm sorry, what? 700,000. You said uh, 700,000 people have died from yeah. COVID in the United States. Yeah, like more so, people than who live in Baltimore. Especially now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like now, wait, does that include the bodies of the people who used to be alive in Baltimore and their bodies are still there rotting away in some row house somewhere? I mean, I I don't know if they fell out the census. So, like, if somebody's like, no, my son just been gone for 18 years. Yeah, I mean, but I like still include him on the census because he's out there somewhere. I mean, he has a and home. He never likes paperwork. <laughs> he's going to uh, yeah, come so back one day. Mm. <laughs> like too, dark. Dad too dark too dark no, just like every dad with a pack of cigarettes um but yes 725,000 people have died in the united states and you would think 725,000 deaths from a preventable disease in a single year that has to be some sort of medical emergency and you'd be wrong uh nobody seems to give a fuck and 
Um, well, hey, we're all vaccinated, so. Yeah, and by it's not we, how it works, it's not I'm, how it works. And by we're all, I mean, uh, you know, seventy percent of us to some degree, and eighty eighty percent pos- have uh, at least a first shot in them at this point. So. Yeah, and I think that number includes a lot of people who got the first one and then won't get the second one because reasons. Um, but uh, I'm hoping it's a small number. But in any event, 1,100 people a day still dying, and you're like, what? That can't be right. 7,749 people in the last seven days from this morning when I checked the number. So by my calculations, that is 1,107 people every single day for the last seven days. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. the The worst part about this whole thing is I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over again, and I don't know what to do with that information. You know, like I, I feel like I'm not changing anybody anybody's mind per se. Like I don't think there's some like COVID hesitant person who's listening to right, me right now and then is going to hear what I say and then go get the vaccine and then everything will be over. Oh, 100 percent not. Yeah. It isn't that uh. Much. You know, and the worst part is too, like you know, the this virus keeps mutating. The Delta variant being the most obvious version of this that has happened since COVID started being a thing, and you know, somewhere in he said the he said the thing like Tongo had the first uh, Tonga, had first, yep. Tongo had his first case, and guess, uh, guess guess who guess who is the uh, patient in that case? You some, think it's a Tonganese? Some American tourist. I didn't see what the nationality was, but definitely a tourist came yeah. and brought it. And they're positive and there, but as far as I know, no Tongalese from the island who are on the island have gotten sick yet. So this will be uh, our way of, you know, it's been a few weeks, uh, but uh, some people like to celebrate Columbus Day a little later than others. So, of course, they are taking a disease to an uncontacted community to make sure that we can kill them off, kill off the rest of them, because, you know, C- Chris Columbus didn't do enough good enough job. But I'm saying one person from Tonga gets it, and then all of a sudden it creates the new variant, which spreads across the globe and is immune to the to the vaccines and everything like that. And it's March 20, 2020 all over again. And, yeah. you know, it's just because we need to make a more concerted effort to not only vaccinate as many people as we can here, but all over the world, wherever COVID may be, which is everywhere like <laughs> literally everywhere you know I, I uh i just feel like anybody who is at this point like not getting it is sort of feeling like if they want to get it i i wonder if they're feeling like embarrassed about it like yeah like i've put so much into it now like i've com- i've committed well, to so- the bit so hard like it'd be like the if other- all of a sudden like this episode, you just saw me wearing like a Steeler shirt, right? And you're just like, what are you doing? I'd be like, well, I've been secretly watching them for a while and they didn't know how to how to do it. So I figured I'd just do it like the, I'd just wear the T-shirt one day and you could catch me. And then I could be like, oh, you found out. Well, now that you know I'm a Steeler, <laughs> you know, and like go into the whole thing like that. Uh you know, I feel like there's a lot of people maybe who want to get it, but feel like if somebody found out that they got it, that they'd be judged or, you know, like. Um, yeah. Weirdly judged in their community, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like by they probably have a lot of other anti-vaccine people in their life. And, you know, you know, maybe they're worried that they're going to be, you know, removed from the group, if you will, because they decided yeah. to do this. And, you know, I, I feel like those are the most gettable people. By basically saying, like, I don't care, per se, if you get the vaccine and you don't tell people about it. I mean, like, you know, uh, it wouldn't be the posting the the card on social media. You don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, if 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 somebody gives you uh, gives you shit about it at like a nightclub or something like that, you could just be like, hey, real quick, check my (laughs) check my phone. Here's my card. It's like, don't tell my buddy. It's like, oh, they didn't check my card when I walked in, (laughs) you know? You carry around a uh, a Vax card photo that's just like um, natural immunities in the blood of Jesus Christ. And then so you pull that up and you show the guy and then quickly like 
scroll to the next picture. Like, no, that's my real one. You just, yeah, you don't, just don't like open up the wallet a little bit and just show the real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't say anything. <laughs> uh, here's a real one though. Yeah. Or just tell everyone you got a really compelling fake, and then don't say where you got it. Like whatever whatever you got to do to like help. Like you know, if I had an emergency medical situation that was embarrassing. I would probably lie to most people about it, you know, like I would yeah. say like, oh, I had a kidney stone or something like that. Something that put me in the hospital for a day or two and now I'm recovering or whatever, you know, but not everything's fine. Out of not an out of control <laughs> STD that uh, <laughs> rocked your body. Yeah, not something super embarrassing, uh, you know, like that would probably only shave, uh, save for the people who needed to know, uh, you know, perhaps if if somebody is listening to me and they want to get the vaccine, but they feel like they can't. Just do it. You'll be fine. Like, it, it literally, you know, it, it's, <laughs> I I don't know. It, some people you're just never going to convince, though. Like, I think, though, you're missing half the argument. Because, yes, people should get vaccinated, and that's helpful, and it get, gets, you know, uh, the, the herd immunity up, and the, the uh, people who can't get vaccinated gives them some protection. But we can look at the way that uh, a, a Tonga I might get uh, COVID from uh, a tourist who comes in and say, oh, that can be where a um, where a variant comes from. But it can also come from vaccinated people because when you're vaccinated and you get COVID, you yeah. are still contagious and the virus is still in your body. So that means that it can still replicate. There can be geno uh, immu uh, not immunities, uh, irregularities that cause a variant to pop up and you spread that variant to someone else. So not only is it, let's get everybody vaccinated because that's important, but also uh, maybe not uh, go out to a nightclub like people I saw on Instagram stories that shoulder to shoulder and uh, take a video of a dude who made out with four different women in a 10 minute period, which is funny, but also that's what we call a super spreader event. And <laughs> I get that everybody's vaccinated who's there. So it's like, Oh, nobody's going to get really sick. Uh, yeah, but uh, people who can't get the vaccine, like kids under five still, and theoretically kids between 12 and five, um, not right now, but soon, um, old people who have immunocompromised, uh, uh, they're immunocompromised, uh, young people who are immunocompromised, uh, people with cancer, people with AIDS, people who are taking immunosuppression therapy cannot get vaccinated, and you going out and making out with four women in a 10-minute period just raises the chance that one of you has the virus and that you're going to give it to the other and that there's going to be a variant and then everyone who's vaccinated doesn't matter because the variant goes around the vaccine or also that somebody's going to take it home to their grandmother or to their kids or to their little brother or to the new baby that's about to be welcomed into the world uh, I mean, and it's unfortunate but well i mean beyond that i mean like i, I think that uh people don't think about like uh uh, I was thinking about it more like uh, uh, going out onto the street. Like if you go outside, right? Uh, there's a deadly epidemic of car crashes that are happening where cars hit civilians, right? Hit, hit pedestrians. Uh, you know, most of them are happening in the middle of the street where a pedestrian is just in the middle of the street and a car hits them. There's less of a chance that it's going to happen on the sidewalk. There, there's less of a chance that it's going to happen on the other side of a median, right? Uh, and there's lesser of a chance if you don't leave your house at all. Like if you just <laughs> like the chances of getting run down by a car inside your own house are relatively slim, you know, not you that it can't the same YouTube channels. Not that it can't happen, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very, it's not a likelihood that you should like my, my favorite set. It's of not a probability is... that you should weigh high in your averages. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Standing like in a store getting hit by a car is where I'm at on fail army. That's what I <laughs> it likes to suggest to me. Where you're just like, oh, look at the oh, milk's on sale, two for a bar. See, but like even so, like uh, today I went out for lunch and I was like saying to myself, uh, I have to be very careful uh, because I'm always trying to be very careful, like when I'm like scooting around downtown and stuff like that. Uh, but there were like a dozen different things that were in the way of me being able to ride safely in the bike lane. <laughs> For, like, the entirety of my trip. And, you know, sometimes I'm sharing a lane with other cars. Sometimes I have to, like, go around somebody who's parked in the bike lane. And now I'm, like, in the middle of traffic. You know, like, all yeah. these things are happening that are making what could be a not perfectly safe but safer situation into a more dangerous situation than it needs to be. 
And I think there's a lot of people COVID wise who aren't thinking of it this <laughs> this way. Like, you know, like uh I, I'm not at the point where I'm going to a sporting event right now. Like I just don't feel like even though like there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of people who are getting sick from <laughs> going to like sporting events, like outdoor yeah. sporting events. It's still like it just seems a little risky to me, you know. That's like kind of my line right now. Whereas, like, you know, if a bunch, if a dozen friends wanted to meet in the park, I'm not even really all that worried about that. So, you know, unless I'm like making out with them, <laughs> like unless there's some reason that I'm like really in close contact with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, we we reopened the office, and I'm not super stoked about it, but everyone there is vaccinated. Uh, so that's and I can show that they're vaccinated everybody had to provide proof so i'm down with that um we're doing masks all the all around the office which is inconvenient but um i get it a, a couple of our my co-workers have small children so again they could get sick and take it home so it, it's worthwhile i get it but um what's disconcerting is the number of people who are going out and like making out with four different women yeah. and then coming into work on monday or going to edc and just getting fucked up beyond all recognition uh all weekend and then like i don't even remember saturday through this morning i woke up i was like edc's over i don't even remember it man we got to get to work um and that's that's worrisome but i don't have a choice in that if i did i'd probably stay home uh (laughs) but i do have a choice in in like we've gone to a couple movies at the movie theater i'm relatively comfortable with that at this point like uh the spacing has fallen away but still you know um Everyone's facing the same direction. And I also I also feel like, you know, for people like us, we still wear the mask when we're in the theater. Mm. And, you know, sitting with the true. mask, like, does feel at least a little bit safer <laughs> than, like, yeah. no mask. So, like, uh, you know. Also, I, I noticed we, we guilt people into wearing theirs. The people who were in the row in front of us, like, saw us still having the mask on and put theirs back on. And I was like, that's fucking right. <laughs> yes, you do. I do like the fact that people here in my building, uh, uh, sometimes they'll be, like, walking in from outside, and I think they don't necessarily think somebody's going to be on the elevator or something like that. So they're yeah. not wearing the mask. And they'll see me wearing the mask, and then they'll almost always just put a mask on really quick. Yep. Which I yep. think is, like, at least a considerate thing to do. You know, I still... I still am more of the mind that I'd rather have the mask on all the time and then do the dip. Like <laughs> as much as we as make necessary. fun of people for having like yes. the nose sticking out and stuff like that. You know, I think in a, in a situation where you could go without the mask entirely, I think the just uh, <laughs> under the nose is a fine, like yeah, uh, reasonable consideration. But like, you know, if I'm scooting, you know, there's times where I'm going to want to put it up a little bit when I'm in a more congested area for whatever reason. I- and I was then, gonna say it's actually good for scooting because it's like I, I don't get all the pollution from the cars either. Yeah, it's filtering it all out. It's great. <laughs> but uh, all that said, uh, Chen Saki tested positive. White House press secretary. Oh, uh, is that where we going with this? Okay, oh, well, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, bring it around. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so so um, and I I brought this up in the pre-show call. Like, um, if this had happened in the Trump White House, oh wait, it did happen in the Trump White House, and it was like basically hide and deny, and then. Everybody got sick, but in a responsible adult, uh, white house, um, very responsible and very adult, um, like seventies geriatric, uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> um, uh, she found out on Tuesday that, um, she might've been exposed to a family member who tested positive on Tuesday, immediately left, immediately self quarantined, notified everybody. And then stayed quarantined until Sunday when she got her positive test results and was like, Oh, okay, well this is happening now. And if I remember correctly, the white house prior to this was holding public events with people who uh, basically said, I'm never getting tested. So don't even try. So um, we've, we've come a long way. Yeah. Um, You know, uh, Biden never got COVID did he? So it is a concern. I Um, mean, he's had his booster recently though, too. Oh. So there's that True. at the least because yep. I, I remember that because conservatives were making a big deal about how they did it in like a fake Oval Office set. Yeah, or something. yeah. It's just like, yeah. I mean, like you know, when you have to load a bunch of cameras into the Oval Office, it's like, have you ever seen the uh, the behind the scenes of like when they do a presidential address to the nation from the Oval yeah. Office? How they basically yeah. have to remove every piece of furniture that isn't the resolute Except desk. The desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and because they would it's take a small little room. 
<laughs> that looks a lot bigger than it is. That's why I, I guess people don't get it that the, it's literally an office. Like it's a big office, but it's an office. Yeah. It's not huge. So 10 cameras and 10 reporters. And you're like, all right, so everybody shoulder to shoulder now, which they used to do, but now I they mean, don't. They, and, they would do these things like in the East room or something like that before where they need to have a bunch of people in like one space, you know, like that's a bigger room for that sort of thing. But like, you know, I don't know. They have a set now. So, I don't know. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. And, and honestly, if I'm the president, which, you know, I wanted to be for a long time, I like the set because you can go do your public thing and then immediately not wait for everyone to leave. You're just like, peace. And then head out and go <laughs> back, go to, back to the office. Yeah. Because I imagine like when you're having, um, you know, uh, press <laughs> briefings in the Oval Office, there's a thank you. And then everybody just kind of mills and like, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to get back to work now. Um, you have your hand on the binder ready to open up the new thing, but you can't do it until everyone leaves. It until they leave. <laughs> it's classified. Uh, I, I mean, know you know, was... if it if it was a if it was a <laughs> I've been watching impeachment. So I was gonna say if yeah. it was Clinton, he'd just go into that side room. He could oh, just yeah. leave and <laughs> leave the oval and go to the side room. Well, also, I, by I'm the way, watching... for people who are watching impeachment, uh I love the fact uh we, we had talked about how much we love this during OJ, at least in the beginning. Yes. Where they were yeah. mentioning ancillary characters in the universe, the uh, Kardashians, the Kardashians, for instance. Uh, in this one, uh, famously, Kavanaugh worked for Ken Starr, but oh, he wasn't like yeah. he wasn't like one of the head people. He was just like sort of a hanger on. They but, didn't trust him. They didn't trust him, <laughs> so they, they had, put him. Yeah, they had two two moments of Kavanaugh so far in the series where they said like you know like shut up Kavanaugh, <laughs> like that's. You know, like, what are you talking about, Kavanaugh? And then he would say something that seemed really embarrassing for a future Supreme Court justice to say out loud. But, you know, there we go. Well, I was going to say, I, I'm watching a, uh, I think it might have been Why, like the last, the last Man series on Amazon, oh, which yeah. I still haven't gotten into. But uh, there was a moment in the first episode where people are standing in the Oval Office and the girl, one of the, the characters, uh, the like, press secretary or personal attendant whatever it's just like yeah uh james still wants to talk to you about that oklahoma thing and then like every ear perks in the room and they're like oklahoma what's uh what's going on in oklahoma it is like oh yeah that's right uh literally half the stuff we talk about you can't talk about in front of other people so yeah. it's just like a huge inconvenience i don't mind the set i don't and i don't mind that uh biden doesn't meet with his press secretary regular either because in a way she is literally like insulated from which well, I, I imagine the previous president was like, hey, Caitlin, this is what I want you to say when you go out there. And then she stuck with that. I will say this. Uh, uh, I heard her on a podcast not too long ago uh, talking about like working in the White House. And she's just like, you know, obviously it's great. and It's a dream come true. And, you know, I've, I did a little bit before with Obama. But, you know, this is a whole different thing. But it also feels like I'm kind of being like robbed of it a little bit because we're still under all these covid protocols. Yeah. And yeah. because the White House is so small and people know <laughs> nobody realizes how small the White House is, uh, they you know, like there's no way to really meet people. And like we'd still do Zoom meetings where we're all in our office by ourselves. Like so like it doesn't feel like it's the authentic White House experience. But like, you know, I, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, you know, like uh, so I think they are taking the, the procedures really seriously even at this point. So. You know, what do you, what obviously, do you call the the thing before the last one? There's a word for that. Um, penultimate. Penultimate. Yes. Uh, well, this is the penultimate White House, though. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, it's a little different, but uh, you know, it's only going to get worse, Jen. Uh, so <laughs> enjoy your work from home. You got more time off than I did working from home, so enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, moving on to the politics yeah. of the week. Uh, it looks Wait, like this wasn't politics. Oh, oh well, God. I mean, yeah. it was. <laughs> It was a slow landing into the more political news of the week. Uh, Build Back Better looks like it'll be voted on this week, along with the infrastructure bill. Uh, you mean uh, resoundly, resoundly passed, right? Because this has been the big thing. So I, I don't know. I mean, it it seems like all the all the people are slowly meandering on their way towards the finish line, but uh, who knows what will come up at the last minute that will? Because every single one of these bills, because they require it's big publicity for a yeah. Senator or something like that to throw a wrench in the work at the very end, because then everyone talks about them. You remember yeah. when John McCain had the, had the vote no and the big thumbs down and stuff like that. 
there was a whole six hours of CNN that preceded that moment where they were trying to figure out who might possibly kill Who's this. Bill. Yeah. There's five people who might possibly be the one who might be Spartacus in this situation. And what are they holding out for? What are they what are they threatening McConnell with? What are they blah blah blah? And I think some people were saying, like, oh, there's an outside shot that it's John McCain, but they kept talking about the five people who they knew were in the thick yeah. of it. Yeah. And then when McCain did it, they were just like, oh my God. <laughs> like, it was unexpected. It was a moment. Like, and that's what they live for. And John, that's what someone like John McCain lives for because immediately after he does it, he can put out uh, fundraising emails and text messages. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm the maverick. I don't know. Yeah, just a them. fucking thumbs down in an email and then <laughs> donations come flying in, you know? Like, so while there seems to be an agreement, while there seems to be just sort of like fiddling away at the edges of what is in and what is it out at this point, uh, at the end of the day, I, I can't discount the fact that Kristen Sinema is going to wake up on Thursday, the day of the vote, hypothetically, and just decide that she's going to throw a fucking wrench in it because <laughs> she can she can do it. And then also, I, by the way, one more yeah. thing. For people who uh, I've had some people talk to me about Kristen Sinema. Uh, I don't uh, care. Stop talking to me about her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, I don't know why she does it. Uh, number two, uh, y'all are fools if you're thinking that you're just going to outflank her from the left and primary yeah. her because she's just going to run as an independent. Like she's literally going to change her voter registration right before the, uh, yeah. <laughs> before the midterms, and or before the elect uh, primary election goes up, and then a bunch of bleeding heart Democrats can run a very vicious primary and then face off against Kristen Cinema her. and whoever yeah. the ridiculous Republican is that wins, and nobody can win because everyone's just going to be siphoning off votes for one another. It's the same well, thing, Kristen. Like, Kristen wins as the incumbent. She has the advantage yeah. of being the incumbent at that point. So. Right. And she narrows the field down because she's got all the people on the left who want to vote her out voting for the left candidate and all the people who vote on the right for voting for the right candidate and nothing yeah. gets solved. So uh, maybe we should stop talking about primary and Kristen cinema and just like shame doesn't work either. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you the only thing that would work is if nobody took her seriously and uh Everyone has to do that at the moment. So, uh, I I get the inkling, uh, Corey, and and remind me about your experience with online dating. But uh, have you ever been on a Tinder date with someone? And um, wait, how how many Tinder dates did you go on? Uh, one. <laughs> with who? <laughs> with the the girl who's currently having my child. <laughs> after a I, after a seven year courtship. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so jokes aside, uh, Corey was a little heartbroken over the downfall of a previous relationship. And to get him out of the funk, I said, hey, why don't you try Tinder? This will be great. We could be single together and go on dates. He went on one date, <laughs> one date. And then seven months later, uh, all three of us were moving to L.A. And seven, five years after that, um, baby time. So. Your experience is a little different than mine, Corey. Uh, <laughs> let's just say, but so there's a thing I've heard tales. Happen. I've heard <laughs> there's a thing that can happen on Tinder when you go on a Tinder date where it's like, listen, uh, you and I both kind of know what this is, but we don't want to be offensive to the other, especially me, not want to be offensive to you. Mm. So we're gonna play this little dance where we gotta like, oh, do you want some water? Yeah, mm, let's watch a movie. Okay, <laughs> like man, we're just gonna dance around a little bit. I feel like that's where we are with this um that in the end uh everyone knows what's going to happen and unfortunately for all of us it's the american people who are about to get fucked not any of the parties but generally speaking i think mansion knows how he's going to vote and he's just milking it to get a little more attention like often uh, you know some tinder people may do that where they're like oh uh it's been four weeks since i've uh, had somebody in my apartment so i really want to get a lot of like uh, oh, uh, the love and attention, even though it's not. So I'm going to put a little thirst trap and then. 100%. Yeah. And I'm totally going to go through with this, but I also want you to feel like I'm not so that you work hard for it. Um, and I, I feel like a uh, beloved, even though it's a fake beloved and mansions doing that cinema's doing that. I don't think that there's any chance that Joe Manson mansion, Joe, but Joe mansion votes for this, no matter what. I think he knew from the beginning 
There is nothing in here that helps him and only stuff that hurts him. So he wants to be the, the girl everybody wants at the ball, and then he's going to go home with a frog. So I mean, I guess there's that uh, potential. I think that it would be very dumb <laughs> of Joe Manchin to do it. Uh, it would be incredibly difficult to uh, consider him a serious player on the on the. I mean, like the fact that you're fifty fifty Senate, like you know, like you would have to find some sort of way to go as close as you can to excommunicating him from the party without doing it. <laughs> like, you can't. No, you can't. And that's what he knows that he yeah. knows that he can be a Republican, which protects him in his next election, but. They, he won't get disavowed by the Democrats because. See, but at this point, I don't think he can just change. He can he can change his party registration to a Republican, but it's not going to do anything to help him oh, win again I don't mean in West really. Virginia. I mean, like, I don't mean really because I think he legitimately is a Democrat. He's a Biden Democrat. He's in the center of the road, but he can lean more Republican on this because he knows they won't disavow him, and then he gets to go. Home. It's a, it's a Obamacare all over again, like um Frank uh, Cradiville. In the house yeah. on Obamacare, just like, um, oh, no, uh, I'm going to vote no, but we've already calculated how many no votes we can. So we're going to pick the guys who are most ri at risk, you know, yeah. for the election. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like um, none of it's all it, none of it really matters. Uh, we have I mean, I've said it a thousand times. We have two wings of one party, not two different parties. Um, they, I mean, they both are looking out for the rich people. It has, they don't care about us. So I mean, honestly, I mean, at this point, ew, like, sorry, I I'm rich. I, I'm <laughs> rich. I'm one of the ones they're looking out for. But. I don't. I I think it's foolish to think anyone that we know in our lives even rate as a rich person that they care about. Oh, okay. That's I mean, true like yeah. to be honest, like you know, I <laughs> I'm not. You know, there's somebody we know who probably has ten million dollars in the bank, right? Like maybe some wait, wait. client for who? you at work. Who? No, oh, no, no. Okay, okay. I, I, yes. Not necessarily. No, I work for people. Yeah, that not necessarily that. like you know, like a close friend of yours, but I'm saying somewhere within your extended radius, there's probably somebody, you know, who has like $10 million in the bank. I was about to ask to for a phone anyone, number. So we can get <laughs> to anyone who, uh, who thinks about what rich is would say, Oh my God, that person's fucking loaded. Like they're yeah. never going to have to worry about another thing for the rest of their life because they have $10 million in the bank. To be fair, Roberto says that about me. So it really, <laughs> it's, it's all a matter of perspective, but I mean like, uh, the the really funny thing is that that's not what rates as like a really rich person in the eye. Like, you know, you have to be, you know, legit up near a billion dollars to be <laughs> taken seriously as like somebody who's like a rich person that would be taxed in a situation. And that's really what what bugs the crap out of me, <laughs> because like they're trying to commit to their network that allows for them to be part of this club where they're one of the billionaires by proxy because they're a senator or something like that. You know, like, it would be so much better if uh, there wasn't lobbyists and there wasn't people, you know, like, the reason why prescription drugs, which is, like, one of the most popular things ever polled in America, you know, negotiating for prescription drugs to bring down the cost is about as easy as it gets. It's a it's yep. a meatball over the middle of the plate. But Kristen Cinema gets... Eighty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars a piece from these different pharmaceutical companies, and because she's a swing vote on this whole thing, that comes out of the bill. Like yeah. it literally, it saves money. It doesn't even cost money. It saves money, not only for the government, but for the people who are getting the prescription drugs. The only person it hurts is the prescription drug companies, which will gladly give Kristen Cinema a hundred grand a month to do their bidding. Like, yep. Bought yourself a Senate seat. If you, if you have $10 million, you know what you also don't have? $1,000 a month to waste on Kristen Cinema's vote. <laughs> like, you know, like you yeah. don't have, like, you think like, oh, I have all this money and blah, blah, blah. No, you don't. You, like, even at $10 million, that goes away quick if you're doling out $1,000 a month on things, you know? It's not just Kristen Cinema. You're donating to 40 other people as oh, well. Oh, yeah. I mean, and obviously. You like, you, you can't just do one person. You have, and you can't even do one party. You have to do people on both sides to be able to, like, you know, like, <laughs> when Trump's in office, you've given money to him while he wasn't. So you could be like, oh, I remember I, I was in favor of you. And same thing with Joe Biden. When he gets in office, you're just like, remember, I was the one supporting you the whole way, Joe. You know, like, that's why I think listen, listen, I donated one billion dollars to one candidate and one billion and one dollar to the other one. You were the one dollar. 
this is the this is the overall problem is that like i think most people would say to themselves uh the senate would be better if it was filled with people i know who i respect and trust like i think uh uh any one of our friends in the posse for the most part <laughs> would be great us senators because they're reasonable people with reasonable thoughts and if they couldn't Caveat, be though they could be bought by Viagra. By but I'm Pfizer saying, like, if you, couldn't, way, so. if you couldn't be bought, like, then, you know, that's it, that's part of is. the problem. Like, you got to take away yeah. the lobbying aspect of it. But I'm saying, like, a normal everyday person would be better than Joe Manchin because Joe Manchin is in a system <laughs> where he and has who, to think I, about that. Whereas a normal everyday person, which is what was the original intention of having yeah. a House of Representatives, was having normal people <laughs> being con congressmen and senators, like. Not just half the, the rich guy who could happen to run an election in West Virginia, you know? Half the people wouldn't even want to be in government if there wasn't the kickbacks. That's the thing. They're in it for all the goodies. Oh, so yeah. If you took away the goodies, they wouldn't even want to. They wouldn't complain. They wouldn't compete. They would just go home. Well, that's the reason why nobody wants to run for school board. Or <laughs> like, you know, like the well, people a lot who of do shit it, without the people who do it, it really want to help the school. Board. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. There's nobody who signs up for the school board being like. Oh man, I can't wait to be the Barack Obama of the school board. You know, like that. I mean, like maybe in their mind they think like Bringing I'm going to be change. so great, I will change everything. But like nobody has like the the ego of it like they do like running for president. You know, like that's an ego yeah. job, or running for senator is an ego job. Well, and speaking of the next generation of lawmakers, <laughs> you had a point in here about Gen Z being over it. How are they Ooh. over it? Excuse me, I thought I had mm -hmm. more than a second. Um. Yeah, I'll so you're new, I guess I should put you on the screen. <laughs> new polling uh, came out showing that Gen Z of any group is basically done with politicians, but they are also more politically active than any other generation at this age in American history, basically. So it's not that Gen Z isn't interested in political issues, they're very interested in political issues. But they are starting to grow away from I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican more in line with this politician who happens to be a Democrat lines up with most of my ideals and therefore I'm going to vote for them. But I don't consider myself a party person. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, this is going to be sort of this is going to start spreading up the age, you know, millennials are going to feel this. Gen Xers are going to feel this. Baby boomers will be dead by the time this reaches them. Thank God. Uh, but I mean, like, I, I think uh, it basically came from uh, Newsom recall election stuff where yeah. uh, it didn't seem like Democrats were voting for Newsom uh, the same way that they were voting for him in the governor's election. Uh, and literally the <laughs> the eight, the Gen Z group was basically saying, like, this isn't about Gavin Newsom. This is yeah. about I don't want the other guy to become governor like so i literally literally vote... everybody i talked to said that yeah, I, I don't I want would... a republican i don't want to turn into texas i would i would vote for somebody else if they were available but seeing as every other option is terrible i will just say you know like no on the recall to gavin newsom uh and this this uh this is not good for democrats going forward but it's particularly not good for democrats right now because they can't get shit done and they can't move like I think the biggest problem with Gen Z, millennials, people like us who have grown up in the internet age, Xennials, that's what we are. Xennials. Anybody anybody millennial or younger, you know, like is like uh we we realize how quickly we could get things done if we need to. You know, like they yeah. they came up with the COVID vaccine in less time than it took for them to pass the build back better pro bill, you know, like uh, <laughs> a vaccine which should have all this testing and did and should have all this medical research going to it which did and have all these experts working around the clock to try and fix it you know they got it out quick like that's the fastest vaccine we've ever gotten out before but a bill where you have the presidency the house and the senate and it takes you for goddamn ever to even get to the point where you're negotiating the finer points of the de like it's ridiculous that it takes so long Oh, forget like, about voting on something. Just getting to the negotiation. Like, imagine if you had an assistant, right? And you said, like, hey, I need you to uh, make this Excel sheet 
of all of our clients and how much they how many views they have a month. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you can get all the information from these other 10 Excel sheets. I just need you to like collate them as a, you know, put them all together, merge them. Yeah. Uh, and then she looked back at you and she said, all right, uh, so it's January right now. I guess somewhere in the middle of November I could have it for you. You'd be like, go fucking home. Like, what do we, <laughs> we don't got time for that. She's like, yeah, but you see, I got a lot of other meetings and it's going to take time. And then I got to like go to committee with this thing. And then we got to vote on it there. And then I got to go to the full board to approve. It's like, it's like you work in my office. It's dude, <laughs> fucking do something. <laughs> like, what are you doing all day? Like, Oh, I've said that so many times. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> and I think that Jen, uh, listen, uh, it's two different uses of the word politically active to talk about them, not being active in politics, but feeling politically active. That's that's what it comes down to because like civilly engaged as opposed to politically. Engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what it comes. It's it's the the graphic that always comes around in November of an election year where it's like, uh, you know, one quarter of the people voted for one guy, one quarter of the people voted for the other guy. And then half the people just didn't participate. And if you could get those people organized, if you could find a way to get to Gen Z, then things would be better but uh, nobody's really cracked i think so. i think most people just don't want to don't want to feel like they got to pick a side like you know yeah i mean if i was still a republican and i was like in on this whole trump thing like you know i'd be pretty embarrassed as of january 6th you know like i'd be like what did i do what <laughs> I mean, listen, Lindsey is- Graham, day of, was saying, you have guns, use Shoot them. them. <laughs> and the next day was just like... No, within the hour, all of a sudden, they they shot somebody. And now oh, Lindsey well, Graham's that's... calling her a martyr, and Jesus... Yeah. Uh, everyone and, should and, go check out the Washington Post uh, infographic on <laughs> January 6th. The I, timeline? I still, yeah, I still can't even believe, like, we live in a world where, like, that happened, and, like, all those people are still just, like, walking around like they didn't do... <laughs> <laughs> like yep. you know and all the we talked about it before but all the donations came back like you know i'm sure andy harris is getting his you know 100 grand from lockheed martin right now yeah you know in january it was like we don't like, we at lockheed martin do not support the th- overthrow of the u.s government <laughs> the violent overthrow of the u.s government well it turns uh, out the guy running against andy harris doesn't want any defense contractors all right, listen, Andy Harris is a patriot, and anyone who says he's not uh, is lying. Um, but, I, you know, luckily, you say... Is he a coward? Yes. Is he a sniveling scumbag? Yes. Is he worse for America than he is better for America? Yes. yes. Does he support more defense spending? Yes. <laughs> is he our sniveling idiot coward? Is he our sniveling yes, idiot is. coward? Yes. Um, is he a real doctor? It, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned like we have to live in this world where we're luckily, um, that's probably coming to an end. So, um, speaking of which this month, uh, this week, the UN climate conference is going on. Uh, famously, this was held one time in Paris and they came up with an agreement, which the United States is no, no longer a party to, um, officially, but we are going to be a party again as soon as the Senate can vote on it. Um, but Biden is there. Uh, spreading uh, Jen's COVID all around everyone and hopefully taking them all out. But um, all over Scotland, <laughs> all over Scotland, and not the Scottish people. I just mean to the to the people at the conference yeah. who are the rich and powerful. But um, minus China and uh, Russia, the people who count. Yes, yeah, the people minus the two countries who really two count. of the top five polluters. Yes, yeah. I mean. At least Biden showed yes. up, and U.S. is one of the top ones too, as well. Number but, one yeah. with a rocket. Yeah. But uh, he showed up, and he is there physically. But we learned once again why my dad should not be president. <laughs> uh, he, when he was young, he might have had some good ideas. He's basically Jimmy Carter uh, <laughs> when he was young. Now um, he is uh, an old man who falls asleep in public places and rambles on and says nothing and is often confused and uh, shouldn't be trusted with a motor vehicle, let alone a government. And or or nuclear launch it. codes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot about that. <laughs> you know, the fate of the entire world in the form of a football. I mean, <laughs> listen, I, uh, I see a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people on the right taking every opportunity they can to 
dunk on Biden for something or another. Uh, and during his time at the Vatican, meeting the Pope, there was the poopy pants Biden that was going all over Twitter, uh, where allegedly Joe Biden pooped his pants. Uh, I don't Which know. Which is funny. It is arguably I mean, it's funny. funny. I don't care. Like, yeah, like an old man, two old men meet together. They're both sitting in their dirty diapers. I love it. I lo- I'm here for it. I mean, like, I don't know exactly what the proof of it was, but like, you know, at the same time, like Democrats this were is, Democrats were doing diaper Don at points during his presidency. This is. Yeah. So this like, is a response to the the pants are on backwards, possibly, or they look weird. And maybe he has a diaper on. Yeah. This is their way of getting back in. There doesn't need to be evidence. It's just like you said, well, our guy was, was in diapers. Now I think your guy is. he changed his suit. I think yes. that's what what yeah. led to the whole like he changed his suit. So he must have pooped himself. Like, that's the only reason why you change your suit. Again, arguably <laughs> like, funny. I <laughs> like I wouldn't. I wouldn't be changing my suit at the Vatican unless I pooped myself. <laughs> in 2002, when I was uh, still believing in the compassionate conservatism of George W. Bush, I would have laughed at a joke about George W. Bush shitting his pants. I laughed when he got lost in the in the Chinese embassy and couldn't find which wall was the door. Yeah. That was just independently funny. But um, I mean, I think there's funny, there's funny things regardless of whether or not you support or don't support a politician. Like, I, I, I'm i sure I could find a lot of Republicans who thought it was funny when W got shoes thrown at him. Like, because like, <laughs> you remember he had his whole like fucking ninja move where it's like, wow, you missed me. Uh, the, <laughs> the first one was just a natural dodge because he didn't see it until it was coming at him. He was just like. Womp. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. Matrix in this bitch. And then the guy wound up and gave him the double fake and then threw it. And he was just like, Trunk. Uh, yeah, all right. Let's I like get that how, guy. I like how my internet decided to allow me to freeze right at the perfect moment. That's not quite the Matrix, Corey. If you stand still, it's not like the Matrix. Um, and then the other thing is uh, Joe Biden maybe or maybe not falling asleep during the keynote at the G20. Uh which, Which again, sir, independently, uh, it's boring as fuck. I'm sure he did fall asleep. I would have fallen asleep. I fucking fall asleep at things. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, well, that's not it. You and Joe Biden are in the same boat. Yeah, you're both. No, I'm saying like you know, like I, I understand so. that people fall asleep at things. I, I'm pretty sure he knew what was being discussed. Uh, but at the same time, like yeah, I get it. Where you're making fun of him, but like, how about this? It's just like a because I'm not. <laughs> I don't want Joe Biden to be president. I just didn't want Donald Trump to be president, and I was given two choices. And the last time I was given two choices, Trump won. So I'm not taking I'm not taking risks anymore. I'm just gonna vote for the guy, regardless of the fact that I don't think he's the best possible person to be president right now. And yeah. also, maybe newsflash: perhaps we should stop having people in their 70s be president. Me and Robert, Doug, you know, like both of our dads are older. My dad's 75, and I think even if I asked him right now. And I said, hey, you could be president at any point during your life. What age would you want to be president at? Like, what's the ideal time to be president? He probably would say, like, oh, I don't know, 55, 60. I, think, I feel like that's when I was really hitting a stride and stuff like that. Like, Halfway nobody, to retirement, <laughs> yeah. ready to slow down. Nobody says, like, hey, uh, <laughs> you could be a Major League Baseball player. What age would you like to be when you get called up to the majors and says like, I don't know, like 49, 40, 50, something like that. I want to do a Juan Franco career where I just. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, I, and of course the biggest thing of this all, like the, the like right wing trying to find something to pick on, by <laughs> like get on Biden about is the whole let's go Brandon thing. Which... That, that's what I wanted to make sure we touch on that because yeah. Again, I think it all ties in. It, the poopy pants in the Vatican is diaper Don. And him falling asleep is the opposite of uh, Trump not paying attention and then being asked a question and and basically just parroting nothingness because he wasn't paying attention. I don't think Trump ever fell asleep. He also didn't do a lot of things in public. Though. I mean, so like, I don't think I don't think uh, Trump is a very weird 70 year old. <laughs> like, yeah, he's got un- he's got unusual energy. Uh, and also, I don't think he sleeps at all. Like, I, I think he's sort of known for just being like a guy who like is only asleep for like doing three cocaine? or four hours oh. a night. Like, oh, okay, yeah, just, just doing whatever. But I uh, mean, and the thing is that he was so private all. Of I mean, the time he fell asleep during he... a tweet where he spelled out kofefe. So, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, he could just be napping all day. We don't know. He's yeah. like, oh, I only sleep three hours a night. Now I nap twelve hours during the waking day, but. <laughs> I sleep three hours a night. Okay. I nap during Tucker and they wake me up for Sean Hannity. 
But uh, I mean, I think the the comparison here is that like essentially they have been saying fake news and with no reason to say fake news. This story comes out and they're like, oh, see, fake news. Because she knew that's not what they were saying, but she just went on with it because they didn't want to report what was actually being said. Um, and that's probably true. Also, uh, she works for a news network, a sports news network, and um, you can't put explicitives on the, on the TV. Yeah. So um, Baltimore, famously, a game that Corey and I were both at, um, said, uh, was it fuck the Steelers? Is that what we were saying? No, it was uh, fuck the refs. Fuck the refs. That's yeah. right. Yes. And so loudly that it got on TV and uh, is it ABC that has Monday Night Football? It was Whoever ESPN. It yeah. ESPN. They got a FEC. Uh, F- FCC. FCC. Yes. FCC. Yeah. Fine. For having explicitives be on the TV. And when they replayed it later that week, it bleeped out the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, beep the refs. Beep the refs. And I'm like, all right. So same thing happened at this NASCAR event. Uh, the winner was a guy named Brandon, and uh, she, he was being interviewed post race, and the crowd just was chanting <laughs> "fuck Joe Biden." Real quick, the, aren't they all named Brandon? I don't know a lot about so, NASCAR. Is there a lot of Brandon? I mean, listen, uh, Bubba's are common. Brandons are very common too. Uh, surprisingly, Casey's. There's a couple of Casey's. Uh, I mean, that's why. Jeffs. That's why. That's what I. The inspiration for Casey was Casey Kane. So oh, there you go. Yeah. Don't tell um, Rachel. Dale is a is a very popular basically if 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 you are picturing in your head what a a good old boy (laughs) no i was gonna say a secondary character on king of the hill that is guy that guy's name is a name in nascar um boom got it got it yes yeah uh and they talk like boom howard too so that's real bad but uh there's a lot of brandons but you know uh, the crowd was cheering fuck joe biden and the uh interviewer said oh listen to that crowd behind you saying let's go brandon and it's like yeah. okay clearly <laughs> no they're saying wait i see you girl because you're like oh the fcc is going to give us a fine but i'm going to say no no you're mishearing it you're hearing what you want to hear they were saying let's go brandon that i was there i'm pretty sure i heard correctly what they <laughs> But the, the bigger deal isn't that it's that it's been embraced as a, you know, an okay sign or as a, you know, uh, yeah, gesture like, amongst people to be like, we're on the same team. This is the G rated version of fuck Joe Biden. Yes. Uh, and uh, <laughs> like just showing up all over the place, like fucking was it a Southwest Airlines yep. Southwest flight <laughs> flight that the pilot said it when they landed. Uh Listen, New York to Albuquerque is is always a very conservative crowd. The pilot knew exactly <laughs> what he was doing. But when I think of two towns that are very conservative, I think of New York and Albuquerque, New Mexico. I I, I understand you're a Republican and you don't like the Democratic president. Like I, yeah. I, I get it. Like I, I'm not I'm not dumb. But at the same time, like I don't know, Joe Biden just seems like the most non consequential person. <laughs> like it's not like Millard Fillmore. That's who he is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like basically Miller. Millard Fillmore. Millard Fillmore. He's he's basically the modern Millard Fillmore. He, he he means nothing. Like his his place in history, other than the fact that he is involved in COVID, I think is the only thing that really like subst- <laughs> substantially cements his place in history as like a president that will be discussed at some point. But I'm like, the, the thing is though, I bet you that Millard Fillmore had something. Because he was elected because there was so much controversy about the, the three previous presidents. They were very corrupt. Yeah. So they elected a guy who would not be corrupt. And then there had to be something that happened that for like 20 years, they were like, well, at least Millard Fillmore's not in charge the way he botched the, you know, teapot dome know. scandal. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> and so I think that right now we're like, oh, Joe Biden will be remembered for COVID. But eventually it'll be like, hey, um, yeah, sometimes we elect presidents because the other guys uh, were just terrible. And yeah. uh, we just needed a a palate cleanser. We needed a glass of warm milk or water yeah. in between uh, the you know, radical people who are trying to tear the country apart. Right. I mean, like I, you know, I, I'm happy that Joe Biden is president as in as much as Joe, as Donald Trump is not. That's, yes. that's basically as happy as I am about it, but I'm not going to like most of his, uh, most of the people who Joe Biden was competing against are now working in the administration. So that's also good. Um, you know, uh, most of them are terrible mm-hmm. people, but, you or, you know, went back to the Senate or wherever they, wherever they came from. You know, if they had a job that they couldn't go back to. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, 
Sure. I, I I guess like if you guys if you feel so fiery about it that you're gonna <laughs> fuck Joe Biden, but it's like I don't know. Like I I think of Joe Biden a lot. Like I think of like H W Bush. Like yeah, <laughs> like there was H W Bush was that though he Reagan, was the you know the end of the Cold War. Was Reagan a was a guy. lot for people to deal with at the time, and then you know George H W Bush was the the warm milk. Yep. And then you got Clinton, which felt like this, like, hey, this rock and roll president, this brand new generation, these kids and their rock music, you know, like. And then there was W, which was like one thing at the beginning and another thing by the end. Uh, and then the Obama. But I mean, like, if you will. like all these all these people have had are, are going to be remembered in history somewhere. H.W. Bush is probably not going to be remembered other than for like singular events like, you know, like. Uh, Iraq, like invading Kuwait, and like wanting Dan to take Quayle, on Iraq. Dan Quayle in the re-election campaign, um, stating emphatically no new taxes, and then raising taxes a year <laughs> and being a president. The two conversations I have had in the last six months about HW have been those two things. Yeah, one, Dan Quayle uh, got canceled for more for less than this, and <laughs> HW uh, promised no new taxes and then raised taxes. It's just something you do. So, I. <laughs> I'm just fine with Joe Biden just being this placeholder person on the way to as long as he's not holding the place for Kamala. Well, I mean, like, I I don't think Kamala can can win. I don't think there is a what what worries me is that Trump is definitely going to run again. And Joe is going to say to himself, no, an 81 year old Joe Biden is just the man to beat. Like, I can't give up the seat. I have to I have to beat Trump again. Yeah. And then we just run it back one more time with Biden. Oh my and God. again, people are just like, please, will this national nightmare just end? And then eventually I feel like there's a chance we could do like an, a, an Ehrlich uh, O'Malley Ehrlich situation where they just trade off on on four year terms and the country is worse for it. Uh, I mean, I, I know the the Republicans are probably going to uh, try and do everything they can to get Trump back in there. But I, you know, I, I really do. I just hope that uh, so many people are not burned by, by the Democratic Party and Joe Biden that they decide to, like, set it out. Like, if all Joe does in four years is bring back better, then he's going to have a lot of trouble when he goes yeah. to run for president again. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Like, he's the, like, what is he going to say? He did. Like... <laughs> Uh, anyway. well, uh, let's try to wrap it up on a happy note, uh, shall we? And yeah, you want me to? Course. You want me to just yell at cheaters for a while? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's keep it to a a short period. Uh, but yes, you can yell at cheaters. And of course, if we're talking about cheaters, uh, and it's not about my past with women, <laughs> we're talking sports ball. So Listen, it, it could have been Joey Greco too. I I, I have oh, yeah. a fondness in my heart for Cheaters, the TV show, especially a guy who's willing to get shot <laughs> for ratings on his show. That's I love money. I love the crew on Cheaters. Nobody is more committed to getting the shot than the only <laughs> the only reality crew I think I put in higher esteem is the uh, is some of the people from uh, Hoarders. Yes, like oh, we talked God. about the one shot where like the, there was like a. Oh. <laughs> A toilet with poop, like literally building a mountain up. out of oh, the top, God. and then some brave cameraman got in between, had the poop in the foreground, and the family hugging and crying in the background. And I'm like, brother, oh, you are committed to this job. You are all about it. Fucking laying down uh, in garbage and poop to get your shot. Well, listen. Speaking of committed, I don't know mm-hmm. if you know this, Corey, but America's game is American is apple pie. Tra- baseball is a tradition in America and you know October leads us to the World Series and everyone is stoked about the World Series this year. It wait it's happening right now, right? Yeah, it it's oh, okay. happening. Right. I, it, it's, yes, everyone's excited about the World Series. I I don't think anyone's excited for the World Series. <laughs> like I think there's a lot of people who are uh jumping on the Braves bandwagon to just root against the Astros who are clearly yeah. I never thought I would get to the point in my life where I would say that there's a team that has passed the Yankees as the most hated by every fan base across the nation, but the Astros <laughs> have done it. Um, uh, and also, it, it's funny to watch people talk about the Braves. Like, I'm supporting the Braves, but also, 
like there's a lot of like liberal pockets who like support the Braves and they're doing this like I support the Braves, but I don't support their racist nickname and the ch- the champ and the Indian yes. chants all throughout the the proceedings and blah blah blah. Like I get in a lot of that too, which I I, I could do without because yes, we all <laughs> we all wish they weren't the Atlanta Braves, but there's very little we can do about that. Uh, and listen, uh, Trump <laughs> is doing the chop, so you can guarantee I'm not on board <laughs> with the chop. Uh, but also fuck Houston. And also, I'm not watching it, so I don't care. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't usually miss World Series. I usually watch as many of the games as I can. Um, you know, and in years where it's two teams that I don't really care about, I find some team to root for, and you know, for a series at the very least, I root for them and see if they can win. Uh, if they this- beat the Yankees, <laughs> they're okay in my book. Yeah. This World Series, I'm not doing that. And it, it's not that, you know, I don't want, I don't still like baseball and I couldn't find myself rooting for the Atlanta Braves for a little while. It's just that I don't want baseball to even think that I'm supporting this by watching it because the Houston Astros have gotten away with murder. They are the <laughs> the OJ Simpson of Major League Baseball at the moment. Uh, and I, I just, I can't, I can't support it. Like, it, it, it hurts me. It, deep inside like and every every team has something that it's them against the world on you know like uh the the example i made earlier of barry bonds like every single baseball fan except for san francisco giant fans are convinced (laughs) that barry bonds has taken steroids to break home run records uh that he's a he's a a little man like little inside like uh, his soul is little and he he needs to be loved, but he also doesn't want people to tell him them that they love him. He wants the admiration from afar, but he also needs to be aware of it. So he needs to do things like hit a lot of home runs to get the love that he will reject. Listen, and he never only... tested positive on a test, and uh, there are natural changes a body goes through, like gaining nine hundred pounds of muscle in an off season. Listen. Right. It's very usual for a 38-year-old man to grow four shoe sizes in a summer. It's not unusual that that happens. A lot of people go from 8 to 13 in one summer oh. when they're 37. Hey, hey, uh, <laughs> I'm about to have a 38-year summer, so we'll see. Yeah. God, I'm hoping we'll find shoe out. Size increase. If I just great. turn into Barry Bonds all of a sudden out of nowhere. <laughs> if I could turn bobble-headed and like All my this healthy living huge. in Bibles gets me that, <laughs> that Barry Bonds lifestyle I've been hoping for. I feel like you're living more like the real Barry Bonds, honestly. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, talk to a Giants fan about Barry Bonds, and they have no sense of humor about it. He's the greatest Giant who ever lived, maybe behind Mays, arguably, maybe behind Mays. They don't but know who Mays is. He's also the home run okay. king. He's the home run king forever, and uh, there's no asterisk, so clearly it stands. He's the He's the one. And then if you ask any other fan base in baseball, it's still Hank Aaron. <laughs> it's Hank Aaron until somebody does it at least somewhat Without clean. steroids? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and, and, until like a Christian Yelich type does it. And then they're, they're going to be okay with it. Um, what, are you not going to accuse him of doing steroids? Uh, <laughs> look at him. No, no. I would have said this about Ryan Braun before, but then he, <laughs> he did steroids, so. He would have been my go-to example before, but uh, needless so to in say, the end, in the end, yeah, Houston. Even if they win, they don't really win. I mean, well, it, everyone's looking at this and just saying they suck. So, I mean, to me, the problem is that like nobody who was really responsible for what happened was seriously punished in any kind of meaningful way. Uh, yeah. The the general manager of the of the Astros is going to be out of baseball for the rest of his life. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jim Crane, the owner, had to pay like a million dollar fine or something like that, which was the maximum allowable, which is pocket change a, for getting a, a World Series. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oil magnate Jim Crane. Uh, you know, they had to give up a draft pick, I think, maybe. Uh, which, and and, and baseball is kind of um, meaningless. And then a couple they, people got suspended. You know, well, Alex you know, Cora. <laughs> international stuff and now you know with uh whatever island popping up they're not going to be able to invest there yeah i mean it, it was all a slap on the wrist though and none of the yeah. players felt faced any kind of punishment regardless of the fact that clearly they were the ones who benefited the most from the whole th- the whole scheme and uh, several of them are playing in this world series right they're yeah, still, still there still on the this. team you know alex bregman and 
uh, Carlos Correa and Jose Altuve, they're all still there. They're all still, you know, and, you know, they get caught red-handed. They show up. They don't apologize. They don't say, oh, I'm so sorry for what I did. And I, how am I ever going to make it up to baseball? It's just like, I didn't do shit. Like, <laughs> you know, and baseball isn't telling them, like, hey, go out and properly apologize. They're just say, do whatever you want. Do whatever makes you sleep well at night. And a lot of the guys are just like, oh, I ain't fucking apologize. <laughs> I didn't do shit. Because yeah. you convince yourself you didn't do shit. And then all the Astros fans say, like, oh, my team didn't do shit. And everyone's booing us for no good reason. And uh, other teams have cheated. And then they point to random examples of, like, ancillary. Like, the Red 1919 Sox. 1919 Black Sox. Huh? The Red Sox cheated. They had Apple Watches. Yeah, for one series. Like, <laughs> their cheating was so blatant that it was immediately caught and then stopped. Like, they, they didn't. They didn't win the World Series the same year that they did it. Like that's that's dumb. So also, even if they had, again, it was one series <laughs> yeah. during the season. Not, um, you know, YouTubers saying here's every pitch with a uh, trash can being hit. But also, the other thing is like the Astro fans will start saying things like, uh, you know, like, well, every team cheats in some sort of way, and I'm just like, well, clearly there's different levels of this because if the Orioles are cheating, they're not doing it well enough. <laughs> like. Like the maybe, only, listen, I'm the only non hypocrite in the world and the Orioles are the only honest team in baseball. I mean, maybe Brandon Hyde is shouting out what the next pitch is going to be from the dugout. And I just haven't been aware of it. But I mean, like, I can't, I, something tells me that they're, if they are cheating, their system is not as complex as what the Astros were doing. And like, you can kind of see this too, bad. Like, like slider. What? <laughs> like they, up. you know, like the, they banned sticky stuff this year during the baseball season. And then all of a sudden, a lot of pitchers who were doing tremendously well became mortal overnight. And you go like, huh, maybe, <laughs> maybe there's something to this. Oh, you know who, did, you know, who didn't go from amazing to awful all of a sudden, the Orioles stayed awful, <laughs> never stopped being awful. Um, no, but I, uh, I just, I, I can't like really, honestly, I think every single one of those players should have been suspended for various amounts of time based off of how much involved they were in the system. And but we don't know. We don't know anything about anyone who was involved. You know what they did before? They just released a report. <laughs> they, they, they got uh, a former Senator. Uh, I don't remember his first name, but Mitchell was the last name of oh, George yeah. Mitchell, right? George, George. Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, they got George Mitchell to create a report where he said that, I don't know, 200 players in baseball did steroids or performance enhancing drugs. It was the randomest 200 people you could possibly find. It didn't include anybody, like hardly any name of somebody that you actually speculated used steroids, but like people who might sue him. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they, it was just like Brian Roberts and Andy Pettit and people like that. And you're just like, Oh, okay. Uh, I feel like there's 15 players on the Orioles who are more likely to do steroids than Brian Roberts and probably did, but they just didn't happen to get caught. Well, no, no, uh, he he only he called that guy to get stuff to help recover from an injury, likely one of them across the many years, and then he was on the list. Yeah, he was a, he was a contact in the phone. Meanwhile, like Mark McGuire is in there as uh two money bag emoji side <laughs> by side, and he's just like, well, I, I don't see McGuire on this list. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I feel like at the very least, if you would have just like based your information off of the publicly available data that was out there that fans provided themselves. You could have figured out, like, who should have been, you know, Springer should have been suspended. Correa should have been suspended. Altuve should have been suspended. Bregman should have been suspended. Uh, you know, maybe Altuve gets suspended less because it's clear that he didn't uh, benefit from the trash cans as much as the rest of them. <laughs> you know, maybe he did... a good argument. I'm bad at cheating, so uh, <laughs> you shouldn't punish me. Well, I mean, like, apparently the story with him was he said that it actually distracted him. Like, he yeah. would rather just figure it out on his own he didn't want somebody to tell him what was happening like other players have been like that in the past uh i think tony gwynn said don't tell me what's coming i'd rather just figure it out yeah so uh I don't, like you know I, I think it would have been easy enough to suspend a half half of the team for various lengths of time and then strip them of the world series and then we can move on and then i would be watching this world series because they face some sort of punishment and they went through it None of them. <laughs> Carlos Correa is going to sign a humongous contract from some team in the offseason, and the fans are going to get him, and they're just going to be like, well, you know, he, he proved because he made it to another World Series where they weren't cheating that he's still a good player and deserves to 
be paid three hundred million dollars a season. More cheating <laughs> like, that we know about. Well, okay? yeah, I mean, clearly. I mean, like, I would not support the Orioles signing Carlos Correa. I don't think I have to worry about it. I don't think they're going to do it this year. But, like, I would not I would not be okay with that. Uh, and I don't know. I'm just not okay with the fact that they just get to coast and not face any kind of punishment. And I'm not going to watch the World Series. Not nor, n- nor does anyone care. But, like, I just yeah. – I think that uh, – I think that – baseball fucked up real bad at the very least they should have did a usc situation where it's like we took away the bowl bowl games we took away your heisman uh Pete carroll never had a win <laughs> at usc according to us like that's how it works like because then you look at the vacated rose bowl at some point and you're just like wait who won the rose bowl in 2004 and oh, it's yeah. just like oh well usc was cheating so they won yeah. but it was vacated so that's why it says vacated now like it would have been an easy enough thing to do, but no, it doesn't matter. Let's act like nothing happened. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. All that stuff. Well, on that bright note, this has been sports ball. <laughs> you know what is an actual? Like What's that? <laughs> to be fair, it's not like anybody was watching it anyway. So, you know. <laughs> I was I just went over to YouTube just to make sure there wasn't some Astros fan who found his way into the comments to be like, hey, fuck you. Do you know how hard it is to be a professional baseball player? Do you think cheating no. really makes that big of a difference? And no, I don't. But I bet if I cheated, it'd be easier, <laughs> it'd be easier if I uh, cheated. I'm sure. Uh, you know, it's also easier because of cheating. <laughs> What's that? Oh, the anthem dot com. Gordon, oh, the anthem dot com. Oh, the anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line four four three two one nine seven five nine five. What's that number again? Four four three two one nine seven five nine five. Uh, you can't currently find me at my website, Corey Baker Filmmaker dot com. I am working on it. Uh, <laughs> my whole system with having Muse is now completely unworkable. Uh, so I have to find a new website builder, and I don't find any of them to my satisfaction. So, if you oh, Muse is re- not working at all. I mean, it works, but it also like it doesn't work half the time for me. Ah, I can't yeah, upload yeah. my site anymore. Yeah, and you call Adobe, good. and they're like, "Yeah, I can't help you." So, anywho, uh, I'm trying uh, Squarespace right now to try and rebuild the site, but like it's not everything I want it to be, and I'm hoping that. Uh, I find some version of a website builder that I really like and I'll have that back up soon. But in the meantime, facebook.com forward slash Corey Baker film at legend CB five on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just as absent there as he is on his YouTube channel and the <laughs> uh, website as a whole. So go ahead and feel free to check that out for his updates from two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Anyway, you can find me at Robert and Chico on all social networks. Uh, I am, I realized I have like a lot of anniversaries that I made videos for like in advance and then didn't post them. So I think what I'm going to do is at the end of the year, I'm just going to post like four or five videos a day for like the last three <laughs> days and just be like, here you go. This is all the stuff I never posted all year. Um, what was that? What was that sigh? Sorry. I, I don't see you anymore. What was no, that <laughs> I was, I was, uh, I was just marveling that I have a, a video in the Corey Baker filmmaker, YouTube, like <laughs> unlisted thing. Where I, I'm pretty sure I started it off with, uh, I was talking about ADHD, and I'm pretty sure I started it off with like, yeah, last month was Mental Health Awareness Month, but you know, ADHD, <laughs> right. and that was the joke, but that was actually like six months ago, so I couldn't even post it if I wanted to, because it's like... Okay, just post it, who cares? <laughs> no, uh, anyway... <laughs> You can find uh, more of me on social media. Uh, also, robertandcheek.com. We're finally so also I'm working on. And probably more frequent than anything else, you can find me streaming on twitch.tv forward slash robertandcheek, where I, I stream Call of Duty, sometimes Splitgate, but getting very exciting because uh, Vanguard comes out this Friday, and I've reached a new low, Corey, uh, in my personal life. I'm taking a day off work to play uh, Vanguard the first day it's available. So I'll be really? streaming all day on Friday. Um, there's actually just two meetings I don't want to be a part of. And I was just like, ah, well, here's a good excuse to not be at work on that day. So great. Um, Taking a mental health day. Basically. Yeah. Uh, I am taking a personal day because we're adults and now have personal days apparently. (laughs) Um, but yeah, so I'll be streaming all day. Twitch.tv forward slash Robert and cheek. You can come play with me. Uh, uncle curious. That's a N K O U K E R Y S on, uh, Activision. If you want to come join me for some games or uh, Robert and cheek on PlayStation two. I had, I actually had someone. Add me on PlayStation. I don't know who they are, but uh, 
come play, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Splendiferous. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think we've done good here today. We've done something. <laughs> I don't know if it's good. The first little uh, bit of the as, show and then nothing after. <laughs> as Baby Watch goes into its second week, as you're listening to this, uh, we'll keep you updated live. Well, I will, because Corey doesn't get on social media. But as <laughs> always, it, you're listening I'll do it for to this one. <laughs> As always, you're listening to the O.D. Anthem podcast, part of the O.D. Anthem Digital Network. For Corey, this is Rob. Have a great week, everybody. It'll be like two weeks later, and I'll do an Instagram post. It's like, oh, by the way, I had a baby. <laughs> and meantime, be- I, meantime, I've been sharing other people's stories and not commenting on this. <laughs> and then finally, a, a picture post. of an 18-inch, 45-pound <laughs> baby. It's like, how old is that thing? No, Five years from now. <laughs> by the way, I had a baby. Now going to school. <laughs>